Hey, Dave. Let's go, buddy. Have you ever, like, wanted to run off and just join the circus? Yeah, but, you know, the drumming leaves a lot to be desired in the circus, you know? Right? I mean... You, you know, you're not wrong. Circus drumming typically isn't terribly exciting, at least by the olden standards, if you will, the olden days. Okay. Barnum and Bailey. But not today, circus. Because today's circus, you get this. Sign me up. I, I'm running off. I'm running off right after this episode. I'm going with him to the circus. Yeah, join mm. the circus. Join Ladies him. and gentlemen, today on the drum department, we've got Aidan here from Cirque du Soleil's Cusa, which is in Vancouver right now. But we're going to learn all about what it takes to play with today's circus on the drum department, which starts right now. Yeah. Fantastic. Beautiful. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank welcome you so much. So, well, welcome to you, Eden, for, to Drumio. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out today. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. I got to say something, too. This is the cool one of the coolest setups we've had. We've yeah. got curtain in the background. And what are you wearing? Man, you look so good. Well, that's, uh, that's the, the costume that I'm wearing in the show. It's, uh, it's a kilt. I don't know if oh, you guys yeah, can okay. see it. but mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it it's is. It's a kilt and some very long socks keep you warm keep me more warm yeah and a very silky shirt yeah. and a nice jacket on top super cool i like it yeah no doubt <laughs> so before we get too deep into the rest of the circus because we're going to get all into all of that today why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are how did how did you get to learn to play the drums and where are you from and all that kind of cool stuff yeah okay so um i started playing the drums even before I was talking or walking, wow. uh, I was already having uh, holding a pair of sticks in my hands. Um, and my father is a pianist. Oh, okay. So I grew up in his studio, basically. You know, he, he had a, a drum kit in the corner, and I just started playing the drums. I, I never, I, ne I don't remember ever decided to to be a drummer. You know, I've been doing this for so long, and it's almost like. The drums chose me in a way. Ooh. It's like destiny. Hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm originally from Israel. Okay. Uh, so it's very, I'm very far away from home now. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's okay because I'm, I'm always feeling home next to some drums. Love so, that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, I, uh, I actually met Cirque for the first time when I was eight years old. Uh, my father bought a DVD of the show Kidam. Uh, I don't know if you guys know it. I know that show. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. It's mm -hmm. it's an amazing show. Yes. Um, and I remember myself sitting in the living room, in the sofa, um, and just watching the show for the first time, and I was just mesmerized. Um, you know, and then years pass, I, I just continue playing with so many people. And uh, when I was uh, 23, Kidam actually came to Tel Aviv, which is my hometown. Mm -hmm. um, and through a mutual friend, um, he introduced us and we chatted on Facebook a little bit, which was insane. That, that alone was insane for me, just talking yeah. with the drummer from Cirque, from Kidam, which is a show I know for so long. Um, and then uh, he asked me, hey man, would you able to help me set up a masterclass in Tel Aviv? So I said, of course, that'll be my pleasure. Um, and I helped him. And then a few weeks later, after the masterclass, he invited me to see the show um, with a backstage tour, mm. which was like the, 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 <laughs> yeah. the, the, the thing for me. No you know? doubt. For sure. Um, so before the show, we met backstage. He showed me his drums. Welcome. And that was the first moment um, that... I, this dream became a reality when I saw, when I actually was there on the stage in the drum booth in a Cirque du Soleil show in my hometown that I told myself in my head, 
I want to be there one day. Yeah. You know? Um, so I just, uh, from that moment, I just started working my way up um, to creating a profile on their casting website and reaching out to people. And basically, a four year journey that wow. took me um, until I got this uh, job offer from Kuza. Right, because the way Cirque operates, if, remember, if I understand correctly, I, I've looked, if you looked at the site, you ever looked, you ever, you ever wanted to audition for Cirque Dance? You know, it's funny that you mentioned that. And in the beginning, you asked, you know, have you ever wanted to run off and join nah. the circus? But, you know, when I was a, I would say late teens to early 20s, all I wanted to do was drums. And I was looking at all the different places that you can, you know, work as a drummer besides bands and doing that whole thing. And I'm like, okay, well, there's like Blue Man Group. Sure. Yeah. But then there were Cirque du Soleil and I had watched a few shows and like the music is fantastic. It doesn't yeah. matter what show Lots I'm of drumming. Seeing. Lots yeah. of drumming yeah. in almost every Cirque show. Yes. And I'm like, I, I told my dad, like, I'm, I'm going to try to be like a, a trapeze artist. And he's like, no, your physique doesn't mm. doesn't warrant that. No, I'm going to play the drums for the trapeze. <laughs> so I thought I'd be the drums. <laughs> Safer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I've always I've always been curious to it. You know, yes. how do you actually get that role, that job, and you know, how much work is it? You know, is it like party every night after the show? It, like all these things you just don't know, right? So. No, uh, we get the opportunity. Because it's like, a ca like, like you, can, you can apply all the time, right? Well, you, there, are, there are different stages. The first stage is going through a general audition, okay. which then you get a f maybe four or five songs from different shows mm. um, just to see how good you are right. as a drummer. Um, if you pass the general audition, you go into the uh, internal archive of musicians or acrobats, whatever. Sure. Um, and then once you're there, you're basically on a waiting list to get an offer from a specific show. Um, because it, it depends a lot of the times. I remember one time um, there was a, a casting call um, and I couldn't apply because they had asked for people over a certain height. Mm. It's like Blue Man. You have to be a certain height to be a Blue Man. Exactly. Mm. Um, but every opportunity that I did get to apply, I applied. Hmm. Um, and over the four years, I... Four years. Yeah. Uh, wow. And you've been playing. I mean, I, there's great clips of you online doing all kinds of fantastic drumming and all kinds of styles. So mm -hmm. you were clearly pursuing a career no matter what. But you were still holding out. This was the one thing you were hoping it would come through for you. Yes. And so how long has it been now? I've joined Kusa since uh, 2019. Holy cow. Yes. Unreal. That's amazing. So the four years, you're talking about the four years since you got into that pool of exactly. Cirque musicians, you were just waiting for the call, I guess. Exactly. Eh? Kidam came to Israel on the summer of 2015. And basically in the summer of 2019, I got, got the it. job and then started working in October. When you got the job, were you still based in Israel or were you living in North America at that point? Israel. Oh, wow. So yeah. you, you came over to do the show. Uh, I did. Uh, during the, the, those four years, I did move uh, to Montreal, mm -hmm. which is the home base of Cirque du Soleil, mm -hmm. um, hoping if I'll be closer, they'll get their, their reach out or something. Sure. Yeah. Um, but that didn't happen. You know, I was living in Montreal for almost a year. And you're probably like, hey, guys, uh, still over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just down the road. I can come in anytime. <laughs> just text me. Yeah. Just text I'm ready to go. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, that was a, a very... Uh, good experience for me to relocate for a year to a new country. Um, I learned a lot. You know, I've played with many new people, uh, experienced a lot of things, um, but Cirque didn't happen. Right. Um, so when I moved back, maybe not, not long after, I got the opportunity to, to join Kuza. So you, you came out and then you're like, Hey guys, and then you're like, nah, I better go home. So you go home and they're like, hey, now we want you. And you're like, of course, I'm on my way. Yeah, right when you get an offer for something else too. <laughs> it's right. like the way it goes. I, I wanna, I'm curious as to what that audition process looked like. You said you had to do a couple songs from random Cirque shows. Walk us through that. Did they give you sheet music? Was it just a track? Yeah, the general audition is, uh, is pretty like, like the name. You know, it's a general audition. You get a few songs. I think I got four songs, but... I know I have some friends that auditioned lately and they actually played five songs. So, okay. Um, so four years ago, it was four. Um, 
yes, I did get uh, music charts um, and tracks with click and calls and everything uh, without the drums, of course. Um, and basically, the, the thing about this general edition that there is no deadline. So you can take as much time as you need to send the materials. Um, for me, it took quite a while to send them um, because I didn't have the deadline. And I know for myself, a deadline is good for me because, mm. you know, you got to get the job done by yeah. this date. Yeah. Um, so it took me a longer than I expected. Um, but looking back, you know, that's what happened. I mean, I'm not, not feeling sorry or anything about it. Um, and uh, basically, you record the four songs. Um, I did that in my father's recording studio. Um, have everything set up. Um, and uh, yeah. It does it have to be with video as well? So you can't yes. just like, so it has to be video and good audio. You can audio. see what you're doing. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yeah, video and audio. Um, it's, it's a fun experience, you know, just, just recording, not even recording, just getting a chart from Cirque du Soleil <laughs> <laughs> and recording it in my father's studio where I first saw them as a kid is just, just that is, is, is incredible. Okay, I have a couple of questions based yes. off that. Do you have to know how to read to get a Cirque gig? Um, I wouldn't say you have to. Okay. It's it's good to know how to Everyone's read. Everyone's gonna want to know that. Yeah, I mean, how could you not know? Like, it's not like the songs are like A B A B C B tunes. Like, yeah. the, you know, there's so many different cuts and, and stops. And yes. If you were to give someone advice now, yes, to audition, um, I'm I'm guessing because you're playing to no drums and taking your time, I'm I'm assuming that they want to hear what you would do with it? It's open to your interpretation? That's a good question, yes. Um, well, that's the reason I'm getting a chart, because they do want to also see my reading abilities. Right. Um, but wherever I can put my fingerprints on it, um, that's what I did. Right. You know, it's very little things. Yes. Um, but they appreciate creativity and originality. For sure. Um, if, if you read, of course, you can read a chart, that's great, but you also need to bring yourself and, uh, you know, the show, sometimes you have to improvise, sometimes you have to get longer or shorter, or, and uh, they need to see that too. Right. We're going to talk about that in a minute. That's going to be fascinating, that whole thing. Before we get to that, though, I'm a stats guy. Do you have any idea how many shows you've played with Kuzak? I, I do actually, um, I just asked that question um, not long ago, which I'm sure by now it's even more than now, maybe around 800. Wow. Whoa. Yes. 800 performances. Yeah. 800 performances, that's in four, four years now, I guess, in 2019 yeah. to now. Assuming you didn't play much in 2020, though. Yes, the COVID. So like three years maybe then. Yes. Or two uh, even. Well, before COVID, we played for six months. <laughs> Dave needs a minute. Yeah, I need a minute almost, to process that. It's almost two years now. It's still a lot, though. 800 <laughs> shows in two years? Yeah. And six months before COVID. There you go. Wow. And, yeah. and you were saying you guys do up to eight, no, 10 shows a week. Up to 10. And of course, some of the acrobats, that's tough. You couldn't do that every day. But the band, you guys are playing the show every no time. No rotations for us. <laughs> no yeah. rotations. No. So if you had two shows back to back, you got to be three. on three Sometimes shows. Even three, they do three shows on a Saturday. Yeah. You know, you think these these rock bands that are going out <laughs> on these big tours. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hard work. You're doing three shows a night, ten shows a week, eight hundred shows in two years. The shows how long? A little over two hours. Yeah. yeah we have an intermission. <laughs> you are putting in the work. It's a lot. <laughs> it's yeah. a lot. Okay, so that's a drummer's dream, though. You're playing all the time. And you're making creative decisions all the time. Well, let's ask him that. Is it the drummer's dream? Oh. Oh, I, we have surf folks here. I don't know. <laughs> That's a controversial question. <laughs> They're looking back. Yes, yes, it is. All yes, right. it is. But honestly, serious. is it is like, it? is there mornings where you're just like, ah, oh, nah. I just, I want to do anything but drum. He was, this is his dream since he was eight years old. I don't want to cut him off. That's but. a fair question. <laughs> Go ahead. Let me, let me answer with a question. Sure. Do you still dream about it? Not Cirque, not like that style, but I'm also, you know, I'm 
a little bit older now, and you know, <laughs> what's I, your dream gig? How now? long? How old? This were is my you? dream gig. How lo- how old am I? No, how old were you Ooh. when you? Early twenties, I would okay. say. It was just like, and you know, at that time, and I think a lot of drummers out there have that when they really love the drums that much, they just want to find a way to make a living doing it, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, and if and playing would be the ideal thing, right? So, of course, that's like a dream. I, I will admit, when I went to go see Cirque for the first time. Of course, you go and you watch the whole spectacle and you're trying to absorb this amazing uh, assault to your senses. There's costumes, there's lighting, there's amazing acrobatic feats happening in the band. But the thing I walked away because being a drum nerd, I'm like, wow, drummer gets chop a lot in this gig. I wonder how I get that gig. That's the thing I walked <laughs> yeah, away yeah. going, there's a lot of space there. Yeah. That's, totally. that's a lot of fun. Yes. Well, I, I've talked to other I've talked to other drummers that have done it, like Eric Boudreaux. I'm not sure if you've ever met. Yes, he's met a good him. friend. Yes, he's fantastic. He's amazing. He's in Guam now. I think he's in Guam. Yeah. He's got a new show in Guam. Yes, yes. And Nick D. Virgilio, uh, he did the circuit for like four or five years. They both loved. They still. Well, Eric still loves it. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. um, Nick loved it when he did it. So I mean, it just seems like a really fun gig. It's people, really fun. Often, you know, we don't le- drummers who or musicians. If they've got a good gig, they typically stick with it. Like yeah. uh, a friend of ours was a blue man for 22 years. Wow. You know, that's a as, lot as of the blue, blue man or as a drummer. He was a drummer. Good okay. question. Yeah. So he was behind the scenes. Yeah. It's a little bit easier to do that all the time, I think. You're, Not as, but yeah. Yeah. But you, you don't have to do the thing every day. Yes. That's my point. The blue. But you got, <laughs> yeah. you got to do both. You got to do the drumming. Does. And you got to like be part of the show, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, it's very fun. Okay, before we get to some playing, I want to ask one last thing about what it's like to be, <laughs> to, what's it like to run away and join the circus? Because you've done that. Um, so what's what's a typical day look like for you? Let's say it's a show day. We yes. won't worry about a two and three show day. That's that's a lot. Yeah. But what's a regular show day for you? Are you are you getting up late after partying the night before? Are you going to the gym? Are you practicing? What's what's your commitments with Cirque during the day? On, on, a, on a single show day? Yeah. Okay, yeah. What we'd call an easy day. Yeah, single show days are easy. <laughs> yeah. You just do one show and it's like, pfft, I walk in the park for sure, us. Sure, yeah. Um, but normally on a single show days, I do go in earlier to practice. Um, we always have a sound check an hour and a half before a show. So if the show is at 7.30, we have sound check at 6. So I might go in uh, maybe around noon or 1 to have lunch, practice, you know, do, do whatever I, w- I want to do, just focus on starting the week on the, on the right foot. Um, I don't take t- tend to practice as much as I used to, you know, mm. because we're playing so much. Um, now, when I, when I sit and practice, it's more just for, for, for pleasure and, you know, for the soul. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, playing the same thing every day is, can be hard. Sure. Um, so we're, I'm trying to, to find ways to keep myself fresh, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, practice, lunch, makeup, sound check. Sometimes we have rehearsals or validations if we have no artists or anything. Right. Um, yeah, and then showtime. So you have access to the, to the gear if you need to, so you can practice. That's really awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we have, uh, I have three kits on the show. Oh. So I have two kits on the show for playing in the show, and then I have a separate kit that I can practice. Like it's like a backstage practice? Yeah, kit. just backstage. Oh, that's great. Uh, it's set up in, a, in the sound truck. So um, I just go there, I can play there 24 um, seven. I have my, my, that's my happy spot. You that's know? a pretty good perk. Yeah. It's a pretty sweet perk. And the other thing too is, you stay in these cities for like two, three months at a time. Yes. So you, you don't just visit and out. You get to actually explore the city. Uh, yeah. And they get to know a little bit of the culture from each place you visit, which I think is a really cool perk it's, as well. It's, it's amazing, yeah. yeah. Uh, unlike um, uh, arena shows, they move around every week. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, which is a lot. Very fast. You know, they do the shows, move. Shows, move. Um, but like you said, we have time in every city. Um, and I do get to explore the city, the culture, the food, the people. You know, I remember um, last year we went to Guadalajara in Mexico City. Uh, we celebrated the Day of the Dead in Guadalajara, which is a big, Super the biggest cool. uh, holiday, you know. Wow. And that was, pff, I would never expect to experience something like that, you know. And, and I always meet amazing people on the road. 
um, just before Vancouver, I was um, we were in Calgary, and I'm I sorry. met. <laughs> you uh, me so to I'm, it. I'm sorry to hear you had to stay in Calgary for three months. <laughs> well, it, it was only a month and a half. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. okay. Did you get danger pay for that? Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Um, and then w one of the shows, I actually met the keyboard player of Louis Cole. Oh, cool. So we we started talking and we ended up doing a recording session together. Was that the clip? Oh yeah, I saw that. Did you? Uh, you guys improvised acoustic piano and drum yes, set. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's online. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check that out. Search it out. Uh, what's it under? Do you remember? Uh, well, it's uh, first and last name Israel Storm and uh, my name. Israel Storm and it. Eden. Eden. Thank you. Eden. <laughs> and Bahar. Bahar. It's okay. E D E N B A H A R. Yes, sir. You can find them that way. But it's really cool. It's you guys are doing lots of really fun interplay. It's really yeah, neat. and it's all improvised. That's so cool. Yeah. All right, so let's get into this. So uh, you guys went for a real treat. The fine folks at Cirque were kind enough to provide us with a clip from the show. Um, I don't know. Was this recent? Do you have any idea if this came out of a recent show or is this old? That footage? recording is from Calgary. Oh, that, there you go. Yeah. Okay. So what you're going to see here is. We're going to have you play along to a section of the show. They call this, um, what's the... the teeterboard. Teeterboard, thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's the last act in the show. Okay. So we're going to see you play through teeterboard, and we're going to present it to you uh, where you're going to see him and the video, but we're going to go behind the curtain after that. We're going to learn a whole bunch more about how this really works. Awesome. Because it blows my mind. So uh, are you ready to go yes, on sir. this? Okay, so when you get in there, we're going to do the teeterboard section from Kuza. Here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
That's so cool. There's like so many things happening. A and lot. I love, you can see how much you love your job, but also just like how, oh just, man, like you're so used to like having that space and that, 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 that's yeah. presence of mind. Yes. Um, and if you look at the clip really closely, you're up top on the, on the, on the, we call it the Bada clan. That, that right, building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're right in this. In the second floor, you can be yeah. seen while you're playing. Yeah, uh, obviously, which is why you're, you're in regalia. You're, I'm sure. And I know part of the show too. You actually do a drum solo, right? Yes, but that's a different kit. We'll talk about that yes. later. But uh, it's just amazing. But what, what you know, catching all the accents and things. So when you're playing a show like this, I assume you'd be playing to a click, which you are. Yes. And burying it, by the way. But. There's also what's called a guide track, which you may have seen on the internet. There's lots of great clips of worship teams and all sorts of things where you'll get to hear kind of the drummer's mix and you hear like, chorus, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. This though is on a whole other level. Yeah. And I assumed, <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, well, this is a very high production show. There is guide vocal on his click track. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, so that's just the show. He's like, no, but, no, no. But. No, that's but. live. Someone is calling that the entire show because an acrobat might stumble. They might have to do something again. Mm. The whole thing is wide open in case you need to have those little zones. So that's the music director yeah. calling that in real time. Yeah. Interesting. So he has to be a second ahead of everything. Um, in, in, this, <laughs> in this case, yeah. You basically, all the calls are basically uh, two calls two quarter notes before, right. you know, so we have the click and that call can arrive at any single click. <laughs> so oh you could play goodness. a section where it might be a bar of three sometimes, could be a two, could be a four. It, we don't, every, right. it's, it's one, 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 one. one. <laughs> because it can come at, oh, any, wow. at any point. <laughs> okay, so oh, I, I really want to share this with you. So can we do the first minute or so? Yeah. I'm going to let the audience hear what you hear. Yeah. And so you guys all get to be in the same chair and you can get a chance to see what Eden is playing to and what's occurring. So he has to react to that. Now, I imagine it's like a, like a second nature thing to you at this point, you, 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 but I'm sure things surprise you every now and then. Yes. So you have to be yes. present, right? Yes, yes. So, all right, let's watch that one more time. Uh, play as much as you feel comfortable with. Of course. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's show them. So you guys get to hear, you're gonna hear his click. You're gonna hear, the the musical director calling the accents and changes while the movements are happening. Check it out. Part four. One, two, three.
chorus to you. One, two, three. I gotta say, like, I that is so hard to do. <laughs> you gotta be listening, you gotta be on. So much respect for you and all of the musicians in that that production. Because it's not just memorize the part and then you just do the same thing. Like you gotta be listening to that. Three M. Like that means yeah. something to you. <laughs> yeah. And then he calls yeah. the chorus a couple times. It sounds like he says, I can't quite make out what he's saying. Like, like a pause or a hold, like a hold. Like when you go, you, you, it's a breakdown every time you do it. Um, I'm not sure what he's saying there, but it's yeah. kind of it's where you guys would come down, you just on the hats and the kick drum, basically. Well, the ska, it sounded like it was ska. Sting. Sting. Oh, the sting. There we go. Okay. Thank you. And that just sits there. Yeah. And, yeah. and so, of course, the question that's coming up, aside from the accolades from everybody going, this is amazing. Yeah. Which it is. Thank you. They say, well, so what happens? This is live. Yeah. If someone makes a mistake, yes. what happens? Uh, great question. So, Titterboard is um, basically like a puzzle. It's, okay. it's a very complex act um, because there's a lot of people involved and it depends who is jumping and what trick they're doing. It depends who is pushing the jumpers. Um, right. It depends what trick is coming first. Um, it all depends, it all changes the music. Um, and according, according to that, the music changes. So like you've heard, there, there are parties, there are ska, ska threes, um, the sting, um, and uh, we also have some drum, uh, some solos, like, uh, you, I don't know if you heard, but the, uh, the band leader said, uh, um, party for the lion, party for yeah. the tiger. Yeah, I was joking with him, I went, ha, ah, I didn't know what it meant, so. Yeah, so th we have nicknames. So. <laughs> Okay, we sure. Have, cool. I'm the lion. I don't know why. Okay. We, they call me the lion. It's pretty cool. Um, but uh, uh, the tiger is uh, the bass player. As you That's heard. what does yes. the slap section. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, Jean Louis is actually one of uh, one and the only original band, mem band member of Kuza when the show was created in oh 2007. Gosh. Wow. So he's, he's been on the road with Kuza for more than 16 years now. So he could probably do that show sleeping. Oh, he does. <laughs> That's so good. You heard it here first, everybody. Hi, Jean Louis. I'm so glad you. I'm so glad you said that because, you know, party for the tiger. I'm like, what the heck is that? Of course, I'm looking. I'm like, I, I, do you see a tiger? I thought there was live animals yeah. in this. Yeah. I'm like, oh no, yeah. it's Cirque. They don't. There's no. It well, it could be someone dressed like a tiger. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. amazing. And that's all happening in the span. Everything we saw. It's all happening live. Yes. Well, so, that's only. A, 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 of course. Only maybe half of the act. Um, so what happens if someone? makes a mistake uh well again like like i said uh, the band leader is calling basically what we're looking for are the landings right. that's the the, lang the landings are basically are one yeah 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 so you see someone does a trick bang, yeah um so to answer your question if someone someone doesn't land the landing in the first play, uh, time we just go back to the top of the the the, the section basically they'll reset yes. and continue. yeah we just we just that's that's why that's why it's different every show yeah um because you never know what's going to happen you know it's and that that's why we just follow the action on stage because we're making sure there are, there is music all the time basically and to make it um basically l look as if there was nothing wrong Right, right. Of course, the audience shouldn't know, and yeah, they don't know. You know, who, someone who's coming to see the show for the first time, it's like you said, it's all so overwhelming. Yeah. Um, so, we're trying to just put all the pieces together and and yeah, just play music for the show. Love it.
Yes. And I have, I have so many questions. I just want to keep picking your brain. I know, I know we don't have uh, all day, but uh, you must have incredible band chemistry because you guys play on that high of a level multiple times a day yeah. with the same group yes. for the most part and having to keep on it and watching because I'm sure you're watching the show happening and everything's going on. Then you're getting cues from your in your in-ears. You know, what happens if your in-ear falls out? How many times has your in-ear fallen true, out? You well, know? That never happened, but... Uh, Give them these things. It might happen now. I know. Sorry. I do, I do get like sweat going in my ear mm -hmm. and then it's like, you know, it doesn't fit well. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, um, yeah, I can tell you a, f a few times, actually last, uh, yesterday actually, yeah, Sunday, um, we had some, uh, during the drum solo part, uh, there was some issues with uh, one of the, uh, like, some, like a technical issue, um, and while I was playing in the middle of the stage, um, I was already finishing, I was already bowing, and then they said they talked to me in the stage, Keep going. Ma stage management. Yeah, they, they told me, "Hey, Eden, there's a problem. We need another three minutes." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm already like, "Okay, I'm gonna just play." You yeah. know, I just played. Uh, oh, cool! And, and this this things happens. And, yeah. And for me, another three minutes. Yeah. Oh, no problem. I got that. <laughs> yeah. It's and, all you need. Three yeah. minutes. I mean, it, it's fun, you know, the, the first couple of times that I had to extend my drum solo was pretty frightening, but at this point it already happened enough times, so I have stuff prepared in my back pocket. <laughs> yeah. It's a drummer's dream. Okay, wait, wait, wait. You want me to play more drums? <laughs> yeah. Sure. I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Uh, Spotlights? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> There's a guy in the, in the chat who keeps asking the same question over Well, then you should ask, you gotta it. ask it. Yeah. Rodrigo Rees, Rees asks, please, could you ask him what the greatest motivation for him in being part of such an incredible and artistic show? The greatest motivation? Yes. I think it's the people. Yeah? That's the motivation, the people. I think um, all of us, all the crew, if it's on stage or backstage, Everyone is, are so talented and professional mm. and uh, it just motivates you, you know, to be better every single day. Uh, it's super cool. And uh, the, 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 my growth pace is, is so much, it's so fast, you know, mm. every day I learn something new. And, and, and I think the people, that, that what keeps me there, you know, for sure. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's a great answer. Yeah. Okay, I want to switch gears a little bit now because yeah. this is only one facet of you. Let's talk about another one that's also quite fascinating. I didn't mention it off the top, so let's get into this. You have a Guinness World Book of Records record. What exactly is it for? Uh, spinning a drumstick. So now you tell me this. There's a difference between spinning and twirling, yes? Uh, yes, there is. Okay, what's the difference? Twirling is when you keep the stick between your index finger mm -hmm. and the third finger. Okay. Um, that's twirling. Which you can also clearly do. Yeah. Okay. But your record is in? Spinning. Which is? Which is uh, spinning, literally spinning the stick between all four, four fingers okay. back and forth for 60 seconds. Right. Yes. Well, what made you decide to, to take on that? <laughs> Thank you for asking record? the question. <laughs> it's just like, uh, you know what, I'm going to do, I'm going to set a world record this morning. What made you to do, decide to do that? Um, you know, uh, I like to set goals for myself. Um, originally, that wasn't the Guinness record that I wanted to break. I wanted to break a different record for the longest uh, time playing drums without sleeping, eating and you know, um, but then I went online and I actually saw that there was an Indian guy that did that for like two or three days. Whew. So I thought maybe that's not the one. <laughs> Let him have that record. Maybe that's not for Some me. Some records are not meant to be broken. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, and then I just uh, started to look for uh, records that, uh, that no one has never broke before. Um, so I'm actually the first one who broke this record. And uh, I'm challenging the viewers, break my record. You can do it. So show us, show us how to do it. Yeah. So I, Jesus I, can get in on this. I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, and can you do it with both hands? I can. You're challenging me. Just asking. 
Not I, I could. Sure. I could. Okay. Um, <laughs> Let's see with one hand first. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm a righty. Okay. Uh, I do. I do play open-handed, and but I I can spin it. It's challenging. My stick could fall. Mm -hmm. I apologize mm -hmm. in advance. This is live, so it's we live. get what we get. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is the oh, spinning. Wow. Yeah. Oh, oh look my. how elegant that is. All right. That's impressive. Okay. Yeah. I'm impressed. How? Now for the real test on the left. Yeah, Let's I'll see you with your left. That's pretty good. Oh, oh. It's not bad. Almost. Ah. Yeah, you get so, it. Okay, so what, right. what is the official record? How many spins in a minute? 149. 149. Now, are you allowed to stop and restart in that minute? There are very strict rules. I am allowed to stop and restart. I am not allowed to drop the stick. Okay. Okay. How many takes did it get you before you got your record? I did two failed attempts. And the third one wow. uh, got me. Doesn't sound too hard then. So how many how many spins do you guys think out there in internet land? It was uh, 60 seconds, right? One minute? Yes. Okay, throw out some guesses. I want to see, because if I were to spin, like I'm not a stick I spinner. I want to see this. Uh, one, oh, two. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I can't do You're it. Switching directions. <laughs> ah, one. Well, two. I think if you put in the thumb, it's gonna. Oh. I, d I don't use the thumb. He's an expert. You don't use the thumb? No. Nope. Show me it again. <laughs> yeah. My thumb is like this. I don't use it. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, oh, wow. And you're. It's like running water, man. Look at oh, that. Oh, how do you get. How do you get. Look at that. How the do you get. The pinky is the tricky one. The pinky yeah, is a never. tricky. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Oh. Oh. All right, well. Let's see some of the guesses. 245, 340. Guys, that's lightning. <laughs> that's light speed. That's like that's a lot. That's a lot. That's For a lot. 60 seconds, you know, you're, you're starting to feel the, the burn here. I bet. Yeah, okay, well, tell us what the number was. Uh, 149 spins. So just <laughs> under 150. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of spins. That's a lot. And the full spin is all the way through, right? Or is it each yeah. spin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Is the video, do you, is the video like on Guinness Records website? Yeah, it's on all their social media, uh, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. It's 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 really fun. All right, I'm gonna take a chance now. All right, because this is a man who is used to being put on the spot. Okay. Because he does it every day. puts his, He puts himself on the line. Things could happen. So, uh, Jack, I hope you're ready for this. We're gonna do blast beats now. So it's time for blast beats, everybody. I did not prep you on this, so this is going to be fun. Oh so, my god. This is really easy. I'm going to ask you 20 questions. You have to answer them in 60 seconds. Okay. Okay. That's pretty straightforward. There's no wrong answer to these questions, so okay. it can be fine. But because of who you are and what you can do, I'm going to challenge you okay. to spin the stick while I ask the questions to you. Really? Yes. Okay. Let's do Ooh, it. I like this. All right. And someone on the internet watching this, count how many spins if you can. Okay. It's going to be tight. It's hard. I, I did it with a slow-mo camera. <laughs> I guess you have to, hey? You have to. Two slow-mo cameras. Oh, that makes oh. sense. All right. Yeah, so that's how you count we, them. We're definitely going to set the record today for the most number of <laughs> stick spins while being interrogated. <laughs> yeah, that's so. two records you're going to have with stick spins. All right, so Jack, yeah. I'm going to count you down on the clock, and I'm going to start asking you questions after I count down, and you can start spinning after we start. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Nylon or wood tip drumsticks? Wood. Favorite place on the planet? Home. Heel up or heel down? Heel up. What kind of music do you listen to right now? Classical. Coated mm. or clear drum heads? Clear. Artist you want to work with? Lenny Kravitz. Oh. Symbols, clean or dirty? Clean. Golf or tennis? Tennis. Chain, strap, or direct drive? Chain. TV or movies? Movies. How many snare drums is too many? None. <laughs> White wine or red wine? Red. Single or double pedal? Single. <laughs> Flying or driving? Driving. Oh! Keep going. Uh, are concert toms still cool? Yes. Do you like suits or t-shirts? Both. Lacquer or wrapped drums? Lacquer. Steak or seafood? I'm vegan. There you go. LPs or streaming? What? Like, oh. like vinyl or streaming? Oh, LPs for sure. And last question, Tim Hortons or Starbucks? Tim Hortons. Ah! <laughs> Congratulations. Good We're going to give it to him. That's impressive. Because he, he basically, he barely bobbled that. <laughs> that's impressive. And he answered all the questions. Great job. And so, some, someone on the chat said 93 spins. 
Oh yeah, ninety three spins. I wow. bet you. That's I'm gonna, amazing. I'm gonna call that accurate. That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, they, I, I'm accurate. sure they're keeping counts. <laughs> That's pretty. Accurate. All right, you know what? We always like to give away a prize during the segment. I'm gonna give it to Rodrigo Reyes, who asked that question like twelve times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we we got it. And Rodrigo Reyes, please email me at krad at drumio.com with your mailing address. I'm gonna send you something special and cool. That's awesome. Oh man. Actually, while I'm at it. Now it's a good time to mention, if you're enjoying this episode, which yeah. many people are, there's over 500 people watching right now. Oh, wow. Not to mention the about 100 that are watching the members area. This is just one of the very few things. Look at that. They already have the trial up, ready to go. Hmm. Yeah, all you got to do is go to drumeo.com and check out us for free for seven days. However... We also have the Cyber Monday. I'm just gonna right now. please yeah. go ahead. And we have Cyber Monday deals. If you're watching this live, just go to drumby.com. It's our best um, best deals bundles. Get our cool <laughs> swag, all that stuff. Go and check wow. it out. And if you're watching this in uh, YouTube land, it's probably already passed. But um, anyway, that was all I wanted. Boy, to Boy, am about. I glad I threw that to you. Jeez, <laughs> man, that's what you get for. Um, anyway, that was yeah, something. Go check it out. Drumby.com. That, that was something. All right, I'm gonna leave it there, man. I don't think we can top any of this. What a cool case. You know, here's the thing is like, I, I didn't realize how many more questions I would have, um, but especially watching you play to that clip, you know, we got to do, we got to do this again at some point, yeah. you know, um, you're a fantastic drummer. You play the part, you dress the part. It looks so cool. Uh, can we get him to maybe play us out? I was something? just going to ask, would you mind, Yeah. Uh, give us a bit of your solo that you play in the middle of the show? Or whenever part of the show you play it. All right. Well, and uh, we're gonna let you do that. And basically, we're gonna we're gonna have you play us out today. Uh, we're gonna come right back for the members. We're gonna come back. Aiden's gonna hang out with us, and we're gonna answer your questions. There's a whole bunch that already come in. Yes. So we're gonna really enjoy that. Perfect. Thank you so much for making the time today. You don't get a lot of time off, clearly. Yeah. So we really appreciate you coming out. Thank you to the Cirque du Soleil crew that came out. I completely forget all of your names, but you're all lovely people. Thank you for having lunch with us today. Um, your sound engineers here, right? Yes. Yeah, so he now knows what your worst fears are. So he knows what he can do. <laughs> maybe blend in a little bit of the hockey game during the show for him. Or maybe just some white noise. Just a thought. Love it. But uh, so this Thank is, you so this much, is, guys. This is a piece that you play in the show, yeah? Um, well, uh, I, I, the drum solo are, is, are improvised. So cool. every time I don't have a written part, I do every time I Perfect. do something different. So you can do that right now? I'm going to just... Let it be. Yeah. Here we go. Love it. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.